The ball has dropped on 2023. <laughs> what can we expect in the Southern California real estate market for 2024? We're going to wrap up the total sales numbers for all of 2023, going all the way back to 2018. And we're going to show you where inventory is headed, plus demand in the Southern California housing market report. So if you're ready to dive into the single family and multifamily numbers, Altos research data, and the median home price, hit that like button and let's get started. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We have been helping buyers and sellers make the best data-driven decisions in this crazy market. Let's dive into the data and I know you're excited about that. Thank you, thank you, appreciate the applause. We are gonna take a quick look at the county data, but really what I'm looking forward to showing you is the annual data for the different Southern California counties. We're gonna quick run through the December data, and this is December 2023, going all the way back to 2018. So you got two normal years, 2018 and 2019, two crazy years, 2020 and 2021, and then two not so crazy years, 2022 and 2023. What I want you to look at, what really matters here, there's two Two things in my opinion that matter. The sold properties, we're going to give you the final sold numbers for the year, so don't even worry about sold. But look at the properties going under contract because that's telling us the trend for demand. And look at new listings because that's telling us the trend for supply. Going into 2024, what can we expect in the very beginning? Well, as of right now, it appears, and you'll see this for the most part in every Southern California county, that year over year, our demand, the number of properties going under contract, that is stable. It's gone up a little bit or level or maybe gone down a tiny bit. But we appear to have a floor to demand in Southern California for properties. Now supply, that's a different story. Supply continues to go down. And we can see here that year over year for Orange County, we're off by over 100 properties. Of course, there's the holidays and we all get that, but even fewer people decided to list that normally would this time of year. So that is going to shape how the market starts out. For Southern California sales, when inventory is down, there's gonna be fewer sales. There's just fewer properties to write offers on, but it's also gonna be a competition out there. I'm gonna show you quickly the Altos research data, show you what happened to inventory at the end of the year, and that's another thing we need to keep track of. LA single family, you can see that huge swing up in the number of properties closing and going under contract. Crazy days back in 2020 and 2021. Now, again, this is one where we can see the demand, the number of properties going under contract. That went up year over year and supply is down year over year. So that's a trend we're continuing to see. We have hit bottom for demand. Demand is up in Riverside. Supply is up slightly, but these numbers aren't gonna compare to normal markets and definitely not comparing to the COVID sales markets. Another market, San Bernardino, we can see that demand is up year over year. Supply is down slightly. That is the trend, so fewer people selling, People out there writing offers, supply is being sucked up. Supply typically goes down this time of year, that's understandable, but when it hits these record lows, that's certainly newsworthy. We can see in Ventura, always marching to its own drummer, that demand is down, it's the outlier here in Southern California, supply is down slightly. San Diego, we can see that demand is down slightly year over year, not a huge drop, and supply is down year over year as well. So again, similar trend throughout Southern California. The ball has dropped and it is time to look at the sales for the year. How did we end up? And it's no surprise, our numbers are down significantly for total annual closed sales all throughout Southern California. Our email newsletter subscribers are gonna get this chart. I recommend you subscribe so you can take a closer look. Again, we've got those two more normal years than the crazy COVID years and then two down years. We're off significantly from those years of COVID and you can see the closed sales in some cases are maybe 60% or close to half of where they were in 2021. So that is a massive drop that we've had in the total number of closed sales. We'll see what's gonna happen in 2024. I believe the total closed sales are potentially gonna go up, but we're gonna need inventory, not demand. We have enough demand, we've hit the floor for demand, but we need more inventory to get the closed sales up. That's the missing piece 
in this market. You think we're taking a deep dive into the data? You should see how we can help you if you're looking to buy or sell real estate. Diving into the multifamily numbers, one of the only places you're gonna get this data. This is two units and larger in the respective counties. Well, uh, according to the multiple listing service, that's where we pull these numbers. You are going to see, we're running through this quickly. And so we can get to the final numbers to see how we closed out the year. You're going to see that demand is up year over year. And it isn't because interest rates are lower significantly than where they were year over year. They're actually up a tiny bit. The demand is up. Apparently we have come to the point now where we're interest rates where they are people are accepting that and they're they're figuring out a way to make these properties cash flow at these higher interest rates the interesting thing we're seeing here in orange county year over year is inventory is up as well it's not like years past for the number of new listings but that has gone up year over year whereas for single family we were seeing a drop in new listings as well la slight drop in new listings demand up year over year not like the years past but demand is up and if it continues trending year over year we could get back to these more normal numbers we had back then now we can see that in riverside we actually had a dip in demand in 2019 we're above 2019 a theoretically more normal market we're above that for the number of properties going under contract and um, demand has gone up and supplies down slightly, down one year over year. San Bernardo, we can see that the number of new listings has dropped and there's a slight increase in the number of properties going under contract. And now Ventura, always all over the place, but what's interesting to see, not huge numbers, fewer number of properties, but only one property in the entire month of December of 2023 went under contract and eight came to the market. So you could see if that trend continues, there's probably gonna be a buildup in multifamily inventory in Ventura. San Diego listings are up and they're actually not too far off of more normal years. So that's interesting to see. And demand is up year over year, pretty high. Not quite up to the previous year's level for demand, but it's getting there. And checking out the annual sales for SoCal multifamily for the respective counties. It is interesting to note the trend. It is similar, of course, this year, we had fewer sales in multifamily. And we can see that in many of the counties, we actually had almost as many sales in 2018 as 2021. So 2021, crazy hot year for single family and a hot year for multifamily, but 2018 was also a hot year. So that's why it's helpful to look at a wider range to compare the data and see 2020 way down in all the Southern California counties, but we can see that 2023 was a tough year for multifamily sales. And again, our email newsletter subscribers get these numbers and can dive in and take a look at the total close sales going all the way back to 2018. Altos Research Reports, you know I love these. I'm always talking about them and I'm always encouraging you to subscribe for your city or zip code anywhere in the United States so you get these delivered to your inbox every week and additionally you'll get my free email newsletter. So we're starting out at the statewide level and we're going to look at inventory. I want you to see what happened to inventory at the end of the year. Of course Every year at the end of the year, inventory takes a precipitous fall, and we can see that in years past. We are currently at what we could only describe as an inflection point for inventory. We are in the new year. What is going to happen? We can see in 2023 at the statewide level that inventory drops throughout the year and then turned in April and went up. But years past, this is around the lowest time for inventory. And you can see that 2022 going back. This is the time of year where suddenly inventory starts to go up potentially. So let's see in the next couple weeks, you're gonna have to come back here. Of course, I'll be putting out content on it. What is gonna happen to inventory? Is it gonna continue to drop and cause more headaches for buyers in the spring season? Is it gonna shoot through the roof? Are sellers finally gonna jump into the marketplace and list their properties? Orange County, not quite as a precipitous drop because we just didn't have much inventory. So it was pretty flat throughout the year. This is around the inflection point time. Is it gonna go up from here? Is it gonna keep dropping? The other thing is I'm flicking through these, just take a quick look down here at the different market segments and new versus absorbed inventory. And you will see there are some dramatic numbers 
of absorbed properties compared to the new listings because inventory is so far down, especially as we get into other counties. Take a look at that. LA, big drop in the typical holiday fashion and happened in other years. Let's see what happens to inventory. Going to turn and start to go up. Again, look at the new versus absorbed. Crazy disparity in those numbers. Almost double in some cases number of properties that are being absorbed versus new inventory. Riverside made that turn and has the inventory going down. And will it start to go up? And actually, you can see a slightly different trend. And that's why it's helpful to look at the uh, data for a given area. In Riverside, we don't see this so much as an inflection point for inventory this time of year. We can see in 2021, it dropped. Uh, 2022 dropped a little bit, started to go up. So this is not as much of an inflection point this time of year. So while we might need to see an increase in inventory in Orange County and LA, Riverside, it may continue to drop slightly. San Bernardino inventory's turn, took that big dip and drop. And again, this is one that does appear to be an inflection point. So we should start to see an increase in inventory, even as the snow starts to fall in that neck of the woods. Look at down here. I was mentioning new versus absorbed. Look at the big disparity. Uh, almost three times as many properties in the highest quartile were absorbed versus new inventory. Not almost, it is. It is three times. Uh, double for that third quartile. Big, big difference between new and absorbed properties. Properties getting sucked up. Uh, quickly in San Bernardo right now. Ventura, fewest number of properties, which means fewest number of sales and fewest amount of inventory. Had a turn in inventory went down, but it is in most normal years. This is inflection point time where we have to see what happens to inventory in the market. Will it go up or drop? Now, there isn't as much demand as we saw in the MLS numbers that there aren't as many folks uh, who are out there writing offers in this neck of the woods year over year. So they, if they get an increase in inventory, we could start to see bigger price reductions in Ventura because demand is lower. It has a lower bottom than we've seen in some of the others where it appears they've bottomed out. And San Diego, and yes, I am saying sun because I like to say San Diego, and seeing the inventory drop. So it was pretty flat like Orange County and then took a big drop into the holidays there. Let's see what happens here. Again, the new versus absorbed, some big differences there. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't give you a quick peek at the median home price to see what the heck's going on there. We're going to look at month over month. Oh no, median home price dropped month over month. Is that a terrible thing? No, it's supposed to drop. It should have actually been dropping already, but it continued to go up. It's going to turn in the January numbers. When I run this for January, you're going to see it go up. So mark my words, and if I'm wrong, I guess I have to come back and delete this section, but no, I won't. Uh, we can see that the other important number we're looking at is year over year. In Orange County, had you brought, bought that home, that median home last year, now it would be worth 17.6% more. That's an unsustainable number. We cannot have it continue to go up. LA 7%, Riverside 6.4. Big increases year over year. And remember, interest rates have been crazy. We remember values have continued to go up. Affordability has been crunched. And here we are still in positive territory year over year for home values. Still, these numbers are too high. We need to be closer to some of these numbers. San Bernardino County, that 3% year over year. Yes, Again, drops month over month. This is the time of year median home price drops. This is a normal thing to see, and it will change. It'll go back up. So San Berdu, 3% year over year. That is actually a more healthy increase in value. If it continues at that, that's how the market should be. It shouldn't be 20% year over year. Ventura, 6.6. .6. San Diego, 10.5% year over year. Big increases in the median home price in Southern California. Where do you think it's going to go in 2024? I got some opinions. Without a doubt, it's going to be a crazy year. It's a leap year and an election year. Where do you think the real estate market is headed in 2024? Let us know in the comments below. If you like the data in this video, make sure you check out this next one right here. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and we can't wait to hear from you.